and amen. Good morning and welcome to Wells Church. We welcome you who are gathered here with us, those who are able to be in person with us today. We also welcome those who are joining us virtually today. What a blessing it is to have you to come together with us to seek the God who's already seeking us and who seeks to live in relationship with each of us. What a blessing it is to have you with us today. Um, this morning, in the way of announcements, there are several things I do need to mention. We will be continuing to gather at 8.30 outside, as weather permits, and also at 10.30. Uh, we will be in here, as well as our virtual service. We're keeping the in-person at 10.30 to, to also allow the, the um, virtual uh, congregation to join us, so uh, we're excited about uh, being able to move back. Last Sunday, on Easter Sunday, was such a blessing to be able to gather for worship uh, and to share life together. Uh, I do remind you we'll be having communion at the service. So if you're in person, there were cups and uh, the little containers with the bread and juice in it that we ask you to get. If you don't have that, one of our ushers will be glad. Just wave at them. They'll be glad to bring you some. Also at home, if you want to join us, we invite you to do so by preparing yourself for that. Finance committee will meet today at 1 by Zoom. Uh, church council will meet at 6 by Zoom today. And so those who serve on those committees, I want to invite you to that. Uh, also, we'll be continuing to do our Coffee with Chris on Tuesday mornings at 6.30 a.m. Invite you to join us. If for some reason I happen to slip away earlier than that, Sheila will join you, as some of you found out this week, uh, which is wonderful. Uh, but we'll be there, one of us will, as we share life together. It is turkey season, however, so there you go. Um, <laughs> Also, we, uh, uh, 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights are continuing to join together for our time of prayer together. Precious moments to be able midweek to share life together. And so invite you to join us in those. And those links are always in our email. If you want to be included on our email from here at Wells, then please just email us here at the church at admin at wellschurch.org. We'll be glad to include you. Um, next Saturday, we postponed our work day in the gardens from... This, this past Saturday when we weren't sure about the weather or how wet it was actually going to be uh, until next Saturday the 17th at 8 a.m. Uh, Loy says please bring pruners, uh, clippers, uh, those sorts of things, maybe even hedge trimmers if you have them, and your gloves and come and join us. We're going to try to load everything on trailers, so if you don't have those things, you still have something to do, trust me. Uh, so join us as we kind of go around the gardens. They've been incredibly lovely this season and this spring has surely shown, shown forth signs of new life and resurrection. And we want to help out as we can as we share in those. Well, I do want to invite you to that. Also, we're sharing together birthdays and anniversaries and anniversaries of sobriety dates. And I invite you to uh, join me in sharing with those. Uh, for some reason, my iPad's locked up, and so I'll be right back to share the ones that I know this morning, uh, I think. Um, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Huh, you should have, Jill. Uh, in that prayer for technology, you should have covered my iPad as well. I do know that Courtney Chance, Jeremy Clark, Richard John, Wilson Carges, Allie Thornton, and Hazel Walters all have birthdays this week. As a matter of fact, that's the list that I had, and I don't know of any anniversaries, but maybe you do, and you want to share birthdays, anniversaries, anniversaries of sobriety days. Yeah. Sister-in-law on the 13th. Awesome. Sister-in-law on the 13th. Yes, Mark? Uh, yesterday was the 10th anniversary of my sister Beth getting a new car. Awesome. Awesome. Anniversary of, of sister uh, gaining a new lease on life. Yes. Awesome. Yes. All great. Um, granddaughter eating on Wednesday. Wonderful. Sister on the fifth. Others. What a blessing it is to share life and to share in this moment. And thank you for being here to worship with us. Either. Present or virtually, we are so glad you came.
can share life together and we share what we believe in together as we stand today to affirm the Apostles' Creed as we share together in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also Please turn and share signs of God's peace with those around you. For those at home, be sure you share it wherever you go. This morning we'll be singing Blessed Assurance and Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. So feel free to join with us singing. If you're here with us, keep your mask on. And if you're at home, sing freely. <laughs> On this journey through the pandemic, we've reached certain milestones that have been unbelievable. And hearing voices sing back <laughs> for the first time is an incredible joy. Uh, we long for the opportunity to not have space between us so that we can pass the peace in a proper way <laughs> with hugs and joy. But we're still tr doing our part. And we're still trying diligently to be certain that we are faithful in containing the coronavirus and, and doing what we can. But lo Lord, how we've missed each other. And how wonderful it will be to come back together to find healing and hope and strength and to be reminded of our journey together. Um, because it's been so easy for us to separate from each other and say and do things that maybe have caused more separation that we would certainly would never have done had we been able to see each other face to face. And so we continue to work toward that healing and strength. And so we continue to pray and give thanks to God for the opportunities we do have to begin to come back to a sense of normalcy and a sense of worship together. And so we celebrate that joy. I shared already that you don't know what it meant to me to be able to gather on Easter Sunday and to see each other's face and to worship together and to share life together. Um, today I want to share some other joys as well. Today we want to welcome Matteo Marani 
Uh, Matteo is the son of Stephen and Alan Marani. The grandparents are Bill and Marie Eddy, all in Spain, um, but all a part of our heart and a part of our life together here at Wells and have been for many years. Uh, we've been praying for Steffi and Matteo for some time, and Matteo's here now, and everything is, is great, and so we give thanks to God for that. That's a joy we celebrate. And today, I want to celebrate uh, and welcome Oris Lewis Hanning. Um, little Oris, probably what I'll get to call him, um, is the grandchild of Lisa Michelle's, which many of you know is my sister. And so uh, little Oris is a great nephew uh, to me. My, my niece Hillary is her third child. And we're so grateful. Uh, since she was pregnant during uh, Mardi Gras season and beyond, I started calling the kid KC because she ate so many king cakes <laughs> during that season. And I told her I'd have to learn what Bo, the oldest child, the eight-year-old daughter, will call this one before I'll really settle on the name. But we're so grateful uh, and welcome Oris Lewis Haney. Other joys you want to share this morning? At another birth, uh, Ashley shared with us this morning of a friend. Yeah, yeah, we're so grateful. We certainly lift up our prayer concerns and needs today too, and know that God comes and, and embraces us and gives us life in the midst of our journeys. And so we continue to pray for the family of Dorothy Kirsch, Bob Kirsch's mom. Uh, we celebrated her life this past week as, and, uh, and shared life. Bob was with us this morning at 8.30 and seems to be doing well, but please continue to pray for Bob and the rest of his family. Also, we, we pray for the family of Mr. Joe Warren. Uh, Mr. Joe is a member at Shiloh United Methodist Church, but is Melinda White's father, Reverend Justin White's grandfather, and we are praying for your family today. And give thanks that Justin, you and Melinda are here with us today. We appreciate you being here and worshiping with us. But our prayers are certainly with you. Papa Joe is what we, I knew him as in Shiloh because that's what everybody called him. <laughs> and rightly so. Uh, what a wonderful gentleman. And uh, we give thanks for his life. Liz Brandon's mom passed away this week as well. And we want to lift up Liz and her family and continue to pray for them. Pray for the family of Reverend Larry Haggard, who passed away this week, uh, and lift that family up. And for Pete Mitchell from here in the Jackson area, was involved with the Jackson Police Department and with a lot of churches doing a lot of neat stuff, and pray for the Mitchell family. Pray also with me for Carlene Driver. Carlene had to put to rest a dear friend and companion and pet, Bailey, this week. And so we want to lift up Carlene and think about her as well. Continue to pray for Mac uh, McNulty. Many of you know Mac has had surgery recently, and uh, as a result of that, uh, time has passed, and blood clots had formed, and they had to do some procedures to remove those, but I'm glad to report this morning that Mac is doing much better. They were successful. He still has some to address and deal with, but is home and watching us virtually this morning, and so we pray for Mac. and. Pray for Carol, too, uh, as she helps attend to. And so continue to pray for them. Also pray for Terry Lindsay. Terry had a brain tumor removed this week and um, waiting on the results of, of the biopsies and things. And so lift up Terry and James uh, and their family. But she was doing well following the surgery also. Pray for Anita Courier, Christina Bott's mom, who's home and doing well right now. And for Christina as they continue their journey together. Pray for them. Pray for Elaine Childress, my friend from Flora, for David and Debbie Lewis. Ethel Hodges, uh, Mark Hodges' mom, who continues to, to deal with some health issues and other things and continue to pray for her. Um, pray for Kathy Rojas and Sue Peters. For Lucy Hansford and Pam Truitt. For Dick Barnes and Alinda Ponder. For Margie Prine. For Mildred Ferguson, Rich and Jackie McGinnis. For Elizabeth Harrison and Ray Lee. For Kit Fields. I got to see Kit and Mark this week. And uh, they're doing great. But she continues her treatments. For Pam Bowen. For Elvin Bobinger. For Willa Dina Coleman. For Alan Trotter. For Joel Gray. 
for Gwendolyn McGowan, for Katie and Courtney and the Donald family, for Rosemary Luckett, for Trina and Bruce Reynolds, for Kit Kinsey. Uh, Kit I got to see as well, and he walked out to the graveside for Miss Kirsch this week, and what a blessing to see Kit up and, and doing well as well. So continue to pray for folks. Are there others you'd like to lift up today as we pray? Yes. Uh, Roy Wilkinson. Okay. And Kathleen Pearson. Roy Wilkinson and Kathleen Pearson. Thank you. Yes, Kay. My next door neighbor, Nan's mom, Kathleen. Okay. Next door neighbor who lost her mom this week. Yeah. Jason Voss has family illness, which is why he's not here today. Yeah, for Jason Bob's um, family, who has some illness and not with us today. Yes, Jim. Okay, Chip Quarles. Will you join me as we pray? Almighty God, we give you thanks for the opportunity to share life together. We've always known that music soothes the soul and gives life. And that's been seen no more demonstrated than it was this morning as we hear voices lifting praise to you. God, we thank you for an opportunity to gather and to move forward and to come back to a sense of true worship. And yet we know that even in the midst of this journey, you have always been with us and that you are present. We thank you for being in the midst of our joy and our sorrow, in the midst of our times of experiencing spring and resurrection and even in the times when we grieve for death. And we pray, God, that you will come to be with each one that we have lifted up this morning and also with those who we name in silence in our hearts. Bring healing and hope. Bring comfort and strength. Help each one to know of your love and your peace. Oh God, walk with us as we journey through resurrection stories and as we seek to know how they will impact our lives. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray as we now say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
share the gospel lesson from John's gospel, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. And I invite you to stand as you're able, wherever you are, uh, to join us for this gospel lesson. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After they had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Last week as we shared life together on Easter, we shared the resurrection story from Mark's gospel. And I suggested to you that Mark's gospel ends pretty quickly. Uh, After women go to a tomb and there they find it empty, someone, uh, a man, an angel, meets them there and tells them that Jesus is not there but has been risen. And in fear and amazement, they were terrified. And they said nothing to anyone. They were told, go tell the disciples and Peter (laughs) that he is alive. But they said nothing to anyone. Today, I want us to look at John's gospel. I alluded to John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18 last year in saying it's the story that we kind of always have as an option on Easter Sunday. But I also wanted to look at the next chapters uh, of post-resurrection stories. John's gospel, as I have have shared with you before, is unique. And it has a uniqueness in its emphasis. It's written to be understood kind of on two different levels. A very literal level and a deeper spiritual level. And we've acknowledged that and seen that in other passages from John's gospel. 
One of the things that's been said about John's Gospel, I remember very vividly, was spoken by Dr. Jamie Clark Souls. I had the opportunity to attend a lecture a while back that she had given in a minister's week. And she has written an incredible commentary on John's Gospel and on, on women in the Bible. And so, but is um, very actively still involved in teaching and writing. Um, but she made this statement. She said that John's Gospel is shallow enough for a child to wade into, but it's deep enough for an elephant to swim in. In John's Gospel, we have an opportunity. An opportunity to look as deep as we want to look into who Jesus is and what Jesus came to be for us. Today I want us to explore these post-resurrection stories in John's Gospel. As we continue, we know that Jesus is the one who's come to reveal who God is to us. And in, in John's Gospel, we're not called to follow Jesus as in the synoptics. In John's Gospel, we're called to abide in Jesus and to know the very presence of God that abides in us. And so we catch that in these post-resurrection stories. It's the spiritual commentary on Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. And mostly involved in these stories is that these stories are intimate and personal encounters that transform people's lives. And John's Gospel gives us that. But those personal encounters are always lived out in the community of faith. And we see that in John 20 and 21. Last week I suggested to you from John 20 verses 1 through 18 that the scene is this. Mary goes to the tomb to check it out, to anoint Jesus' body. When she gets there, the tomb is empty. And she runs back and tells the disciples. And, and Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved, we assuming John, ran to the tomb and came back. And we left it in somewhat a quandary with them. But with Mary, Jesus, she hangs around the garden until Jesus comes. And then Mary has a personal encounter with Jesus. Thinking he's the gardener, he says, where have you laid him? And Jesus speaks her name, Mary. And in that moment, Mary knows that this is the Lord. That this is Jesus. In that moment, I'm sure that the, the calming of Jesus' voice calling her name brought much peace and strength into her soul that was questioning and wandering in the moment. And Jesus says, go tell them I'm alive. Shift forward to our first scene today in the scripture passage we have in beginning at verses 19. Jesus enters the room where the disciples are on that first Sunday, Resurrection Day. And the first thing Jesus does is to say, peace be with you, and offers them peace. And once they realize who he is, because they see the scars that indicate what they had just witnessed, they were also offered a challenge. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Well, you know, in the next scene, Thomas, one of the disciples, was not there. And not only was Thomas not there, but Thomas was not having it, right? I mean, they told him they had seen the Lord. We saw him. We witnessed it. We know it was him. Thomas said, I ain't believing it until I see it for myself. You see the difference in these encounters with people? Mary, hearing the voice call her name. And being challenged to go and tell him he's alive. The disciples, as the Father has sent me, so I send you, know my peace. And Thomas, lest I see it with my own two eyes and touch it with my own hands, I'm not going to believe it. And so in this third scene, Jesus appears again. And Thomas is there. To Thomas, he says, touch here. See, I am who I say I am, and that I've been resurrected. Stop doubting and believe. 
I love the way John's gospel offers us opportunities to find ourselves in the post-resurrection stories. As you continue into chapter 21, you'll see another piece of relationship that happens when the disciples follow Peter back onto the boat and go fishing and Jesus comes into their presence and Peter swims to the shore knowing it's the Lord and Jesus looks Peter in the eyes. I just believe that this encounter, the thing that happened to most is that Jesus looked Peter right in the eyes and he said, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me, Peter? Tend my lambs. Peter, do you love me? <laughs> Feed my sheep. And it offers us the depth of another opportunity to find ourselves in the presence of Jesus, in the one who can transform and give life. I don't know where you may be in your journey and what resurrection really means to you today. But I know that there is a risen Lord who is seeking to find you and who is seeking to come into your life to bring light and life into your darkness and hope and love into your world. A few things I do notice that's common among the encounters. When Jesus comes into the situation, there is peace. Not only did he say it multiple times, but he's shown it by looking in people's eyes and calling their name. Peace be with you. Oh, how we long for peace. In the midst of our grief and conflict and struggle, in the midst of our division and, and struggles of life during this time, we long for peace. Peace with our Lord and peace with each other. And again, I invite you to hear these words of Jesus. Peace be with you. Jesus offers us peace. He also brings a presence and a power that can transform our lives. He is with us. He abides with us as we abide in Him and find life in Him and are guided and strengthened by the presence. He breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. And so we know that the very presence of God journeys with us through no matter what we face. And so we not only know peace, we know His presence and His power. For the disciples and Thomas, He offered proof. Look at the nail-scarred hands. And with all of them, He offered them purpose. A reason to live and a reason to share and a reason to proclaim the risen Lord. Peace, presence, and power, and purpose. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. For these things were written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And that through believing, you may find life in his name. May you find yourself somewhere in the story. And may you know the power of the risen Lord who comes to offer you peace, strength, guidance, and purpose. Amen, amen. and amen. We are so grateful that we have the opportunity to share life and to share God's presence and to gather around God's table. During this pandemic, I know that I've stepped out on a limb by offering communion every Sunday. <laughs> but yet I felt like it was the one thing that we as a community of faith who worship here at Wells could find the very sense of God's presence and peace in if we journeyed in and did together. And so we remember on the night Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he blessed it and he passed it around. Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. It's because of what Christ has done for us that we know 
that Christ's presence comes to transform these elements, even though they're prepackaged, to become the body and blood of Christ so that we may know the real presence of Christ that nurtures and strengthens us. And so we pray, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and those gathered with us wherever they may be. May your presence come to unite us as one. That this may become the body and blood of Christ poured out for us so that we can be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Lord, continue to work to call us to your presence and come and be near. In Christ's name. Amen. It's the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shared for you. I'll sing through once and invite you to join me. Make us one, Lord. Make us one, Lord. Make us one. Holy Spirit. presence of the living Lord as you go forth to live in his love and may the peace of Christ be with you as you go through your week in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing with me because he lives just the chorus. falling out, but say hello to each other outside as you go forth, alright? Please be sure to speak to each other outside.